so many of the people I spoke to have really tuned out of the national political conversation because it's all noise to them. They yeah. think it's a bunch of people who get paid to yell at each other on TV. They're not wrong about a lot <laughs> They're of They're not, it. no. Yeah. You've been talking to voters in various states, so what are you hearing? Uh, I think the most surprising thing I learned after talking to all these different swing groups of voters is how disconnected they feel from politics, okay. how cynical they are about political institutions, including both parties and the media. Very few people who liked Donald Trump who had anything good to say about him. Right. Uh, there's probably only a handful of people who said that they were going to vote for Trump again. Yeah, Trump, I'm, I'm honest, I voted for Trump too. Because um, of some stuff that he said, I agreed on. And it turned out to be all lies. So the Obama-Trump voters I spoke to when I said, well, why did you vote for whoever you voted for, Obama, Trump. So they said they voted for Obama because he was changed, Trump because he was changed, and then Tony Evers, the governor of Wisconsin now, because he was a change from Scott Walker, and Scott Walker wasn't doing it for them. Right. So these people are continually voting for change, and now um, they're all, or most of them at least, were disappointed with Trump, and so now they're looking for someone else who represents change. The Miami group was people who voted for Obama in 12, and then stayed home in 16 or voted third party. They were not big fans of the Democratic Party in general. They also really don't like Trump. Okay. How many people, uh, show of hands, are planning on voting in 2020? <laughs> Everyone's voting. <laughs> All right, is, um, how many people are definitely not voting for Trump? So no one's definitely, okay. Who is definitely voting for the Democratic nominee? One, two. Three people. Okay. So far. So this is fascinating. Getting these voters out and getting them to support a candidate, I think, is going to require a candidate who is different, who seems very different from Washington, who's different than the usual candidate, who doesn't. They don't want to have someone who overpromises. Right. But they also uh, don't want someone who's just going to be the same. Right. I know this sounds like very it's a gold very lots. fine line. It's yes. a very fine line. Yeah. Terrifying. Is it? Is Am it I more... gonna have it? If, is my boss gonna lay me off? Am I gonna have it? How do I get it then? Is it gonna be available? Who decided that my state's gonna have it or not? Where am I gonna get the money to pay for anything if I don't have a job? Healthcare came up more than any other issue, and it wasn't even close. And I heard stories about people not being able to make their medical bills, ambulance rides that cost them too much money, prescription drugs that they couldn't afford. I mean, like all the things you see in polls and you hear about in DC, it, it's real. Like I just, I, I couldn't believe the stories I heard about healthcare. showed us that the votes are out there yep. for Democrats to win this election. It happened. We won an election in the Trump era by a huge margin. And we won because we turned out new voters. And we also won because we persuaded a bunch of people who voted for Donald Trump and Republicans in the past to switch sides. And we have to do both of those things in 2020.